Unit four, part six, computer froze up there at the end of part five. We were discussing this important example on page 56, where we've got two uses of while, comparing two uses of while, W-H-I-L-E, uh, as an operator, right? Um, so it's this, the third last one on the list, but is truth functional, while because is not. Third last one there. <clears throat> compared with the one at the very bottom of the page. John waited in the car while Mary cashed a check. Okay, so um, what are we doing? We're symbolizing English sentences. You will be presented with sentences in your exam, say, and um, tasked with symbolizing them, and you have to ask yourself whether uh, the operator is or is not equivalent to a conjunction. The first one is, so the, the first use of while is, um, <coughs> is a conjunction, is, is logically equivalent to the word and, right? It's just saying the truth, the truth conditions for that sentence, but is truth functional while because is not, right? The truth conditions for that sentence is just both the sentences are true, right? Whenever both those sentences are true, that compound is also true. That is not true of the second one. John waited in the car while Mary cashed her check. You have to recognize um, that that, I that use of while as an operator is a non-truth functional use of the operator, right? Um, the truth value of John waited in the car while Mary cashed her check is not determined only by the truth values of the component sentences, right? John waited in the car while Mary cashed her check is only true when John waited in his car and Mary cashed her check at the same time, right? There's that time reference, right? This means that you've got one case of, um, say, say you've got John waiting in his car and Mary cashing her check at the same time, right? Then both sentences are true and the compound is true, but now, right, the, the second pair, which is going to prove it's a non-truth non functional operator, what about the case when John waits in the car on Tuesday, Mary cashes her check on Wednesday, right? Then both components are true, but the compound, John waited in the car while Mary cashed her check, that compound is false, right? So there you've got true, true going to false, whereas in the first case we had, and they do do it at the same time, it's true, true going to true. So that shows us that that use of while, right, um, is not truth functional, and therefore that sentence does not get symbolized with a dot. Okay, so that's a good example to reflect upon to convince yourself to prove that uh, when you're presented with English sentences to translate, you, which will be part of your exam, there will be a symbolization section of the exam, you really need to process it for meaning, right? You can't just look at words and say, oh, while, I know that that gets a dot, but in all cases, right? You've got to process for meaning, see what is being said by the uh, sentence. Okay. Um, read over the con disjunction, there's no big troubles there, so I won't say anything about that. That is telling you when you need to use the wedge for disjunction to, to the symbols. Um, negation, there's a few tricky bits of negation which I'll go over. Um, first thing is to just reiterate that negations, you always have to, whenever you do have a sentence which is negated or that in involves Whenever the negation, a negation appearing in a sentence is truly the negation of a sentence, that is logical structure, that is logical form, and you have to symbolize that form, right? And often it is uh, sort of buried, right? It's, it's always the word not that's going to indicate the negation, or it is not the case that, but of course the not can get contraction. So you just have to recognize that a sentence that at first glance you might mistake for a simple sentence, Bill... Uh, Bill isn't happy, right? That is not a simple sentence. That is a compound sentence, right? This means it is not the case. It is not the case that Bill is happy. So you need to express the positive you need, in giving your symbolization. The sentence you take as a simple sentence for which you give a abbreviation, right, a capital letter, has to be the positive sentence, right? Let's have it. Um, B equals. Bill is Bill is happy, right? That's my translation. That's my that's my 
dictionary, right? Bill is happy, so the translation of Bill isn't happy is, is not B, right? That is crucial if, if you don't capture all the actual logical structure that is there, you will not be able to correctly, um, formally, symbolically uh, express or capture or comprehend um, the logical validity of some arguments that you would otherwise be able to do. Right? So for example, if, if two of the sentences in an argument are something like, you know, one is Bill isn't happy, and the other one is something something Bill is happy, right? if you had symbolized Bill isn't happy as B, right, then uh, if, 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 if you had given B as the letter for Bill isn't happy, then tasked with translating Bill is happy, you have to give another letter, right? H equals Bill is happy, right? And then there's no connection between B and H, right? But if you do it correctly and you capture the logical structure in this, you recognize that Bill isn't happy is properly not B, right? You see that not B, and then when you come to translate Bill is happy, you do B, right? Now we have the connection, right? This is the negation of that. Whereas that is not the negation of that, or vice versa, right? And that's important because, right, um, yeah, right if you've got um, not B, say you had right, not B and B or G, right? From these, as we'll learn when we do proofs, you can prove G, right? Formally, logically, right? Or even if you did the truth tables, right? Um, if this was the argument, if it's premise one, premise two, conclusion, right? This you can sh show through a truth table that it's valid, right? But um, B or G, right? by comparison, H, B or G, G. Right? So this you cannot show is logically valid, right? Because there's no connection between these. Right? But if it's not B, B or G, right? if that's true. G must be true. If G wasn't true, B or G wouldn't be true when not B is true. That is B is false. Okay? So this you can show valid, that you can't. You'd miss out on that opportunity to show the thing valid if you miss the logical structure in Bill isn't happy. So whenever you see isn't, you've got to express that uh, logical structure. Okay? Um, neither nor and um, uh, not both are tricky for people, right? She goes over this. So um, uh, I'll give the, the, the symbolizations of these and what you need to get really good at is reading the symbols, right? In translations, I should say this, let me stress this, in translations always, once you've given your symbolic, uh, your translation, once you've given your symbolization, always read back the symbolization. You have to get very good, this is very important for a lot of what we do, you have to get very good at um, being able to read the symbolizations in English, right? I'll be stressing that it often involves when you've got big complex formulas, saying the major operator first, right? You might have blah, 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 hook, blah, 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 blah. You'll have to say if this and that or this and that, then blah, 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 right? You've got to, you to say the major operator first. I'll show you that when we get to it. But anyway, okay. Uh, if you process these for meaning, right? I've given you examples here which uh, you'll care about, <laughs> getting A's or B's in the course, or neither. Um, process these for meaning, it will help you to get to the, the correct logical form, the correct symbolization. Right? If I tell you, you will not get both an A and a B in this course. You will not get both an A, a B, and a B in this course. Are you worried? Are you bothered? Not really, right? Because what am I telling you? I'm telling you, uh, because you're not worried because what I say here is still consistent with you getting an A and it's still consistent with you getting a B, right? Um, you could still, I haven't told you, all I've told you is that you won't get both, you will not get both an A and a B. You might say, well, I couldn't do that anyway. I'm either getting an A or a B. Okay, so the symbolization of this is you will not get both an A and a B not both, that's the important bit. The logical form is not both, right? I'm negating both, which means 
I am negating a conjunction. This is a negated conjunction, right? This is the logical form. Negated conjunction, right? And you can see here the order of construction. I've made a conjunction and then I've negated it. Right? First, I put I conjoined, right? So let A equals I get an A, B equals I get a B. Um, so this is I will get an, both an A and a B, which you think is in, you think is impossible, and you're right. And I'm saying exactly the same thing as your thought that is impossible. You're saying it's not the case that you will get both an A and a B. So you're going to learn to read this, and you'll do this a lot, especially this, this particular form. You, it's absolutely essential you be able to be able to read it. Um, this particular form is in one of the rules, one of the rules on the bottom half of the inside cover of your book, which will be introduced to in Unit Eight. Um, you read this as not both. It is not the case that both A and B are true. 